Hi again then guys and welcome to episode 30 of GT Masters, the review series for Gran Turismo's selection of, as the name suggests, GT class or at least similar to GT class race cars. And in this particular pick, we're technically reviewing kind of two vehicles at the same time because there's no real need to do two completely separate videos for these cars because of how similar they actually are in practice. Now the car overall is the Corvette C6R, but on Gran Turismo it's not called that because it's not the actual C6R, it's the Z06 race car and the ZR1 race car, but they're C6Rs basically. Now they are different and they're both very well priced and they're both Corvettes and Corvettes have been hugely competitive racing cars since way back in the day, even as far back as the 9.8 litre Spirit of Le Mans Corvette C3. And even further back, they've always been great racing cars and a, a dominant force, even up to recent years, at the Le Mans. So it goes without saying that they're probably going to be very good. My personal favourite Corvette race car on the game is the C5R. But how does the C6R compare? Because it's certainly the most popular choice in both ZR1 and Z06 forms. Well, they compare interestingly well, not only to each other, but also to other cars. One does have distinctly better specs, and unsurprisingly, it's the ZR1 based vehicle. But don't discount the Z06 version because it also has some very specific advantages, and not just little advantages, they are significant. Now the car is powered by, as you'd expect from a Corvette, a 6.2 litre engine, in the case of the ZR1, a 7 litre in the case of the Z06, and the ZR1 is by a pretty healthy margin the more powerful of the two. The Z06 puts out 901 horsepower, which is already a lot, and the ZR1 puts out 1041. As far as torque, the ZR1 has also more, unsurprisingly, at 928 foot-pounds compared to 746. As far as weight, though, the Z06 is lighter, but only by 10 kilos at 1,090 compared to 1,100 on the dot for the ZR1. So both cars are very, very lightweight, significantly lighter than most of, say, the Audi R8 or Nissan GTR race cars. As far as horsepower per tonne, they are both very, very good, considering that even though the Z06 is the lesser of the two, it still has a huge amount of power to work with. Over 900 horsepower is nothing to be sniffed at. Now, the ZR1 puts out 946 horsepower per tonne, the Z06 827. So again, both are very impressive. What about for the PP? Well, for the PP, they are quite different, to say the least. Uh, there is a significant gap between the two. The Z06 is a pretty humdrum, what you'd expect, 656 PP. That's, well, as I said, what you'd expect. That's what your average car of that kind of power in the GT class would probably be. The ZR1-based model, though, is very high, 682, making it one of the highest in the GT class. As far as price, this is another way which the Z06, the less powerful model, does have an advantage. And when it comes to price, any advantage is significant. So, how much cheaper is it? Well, almost a hundred grand cheaper. 264,000 credits compared to 385. So the best part of 80 grand cheaper. That's nothing to be scoffed at at all. But, that being said, both cars are fantastic value for money. Even the more expensive of the two, at 385 grand, is still an amazing price for such a powerful and fast and competitive and genuinely brilliant race car. Now, I've said before, I'm a huge fan of the Corvette in all of its forms, road cars, race cars, etc. So am I biased in favour of the Corvettes? Not at all. If the car has a downside, I will still point it out. And they do. One very significant, but at the same time, really ironic downside, to me at least, 
And that is, of all the things that you wouldn't think a Corvette would be bad at, top speed is probably the last on the list. Considering how fast the road-going versions are, you'd expect the race cars to be up there with the best of them, if not the best, when it comes to top speed, especially considering its rivals. The Viper GTSR, for instance, can do over 260 under its own power. The Zonda R can do more, and various others have the kind of top speeds that you would expect from them. On Gran Turismo, at least. The Corvette, though, unfortunately falls very, very short of those rivals. For some reason, and unfortunately I think it must be the TVR Speed 12 Syndrome, where Gran Turismo has really dialed the car back, to prevent it from being as good as it should be, considering how OP everything else is, that that's the only thing that really makes sense, because as a correlation of spec to its rivals, it should be faster than it is. So there's no real reason for it to be held back, apart from Polyphony doing that deliberately, which I hope they didn't, but at the same time I wouldn't be at all surprised if they did. The top speed on both models struggles to pass around 230, 235, and that really is shockingly low for a car with so much power in both vehicles' case. Unfortunately, that does affect it a lot on tracks such as the Le Mans, because you hit that top speed so quickly due to the sheer power that your rivals will catch up quite quickly, especially if they have low downforce setting and obviously if they get your draft. So that is a very distinct downside to note, and a very unfortunate one. It's also strange because the C5R does have a pretty good top speed, it does over 250. So again, it makes no sense that these cars are as slow as they are. For some reason the Camaro LM race car suffers from the same issue, being even slower. But, that being said, don't let that put you off these cars. They are both genuinely brilliant race cars. They're very playful, and you do need to keep that in mind. They're the kind of car which you need to stop from running away with itself, because they have so much power, so much torque, and they're so good at going fast that they can very easily kind of run away with themselves, almost like the car has a personality in that regard. So you need to be careful of how quick you allow the car to go, ironically enough. But as a race car, it will serve you brilliantly well, regardless of which of the two you decide to purchase. Overall, I would probably recommend the ZR1 because it has stronger acceleration, a higher horsepower per tonne, and also the fact that the PP itself is just higher means that you have more range of choice. Both, though, are brilliant cars and are amazing value for money. So that's it for this review. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.